Welcome to part two of our conversation with Chris Sutton. Is it always uh, a foolproof method? Is there always a way where the living and, and their request and their intent will win out over the spirit on the other side when they go through something like this? Or does the spirit have the right to say, no, uh, I know you want peace. I know you want me out, mm -hmm. but I don't want out and I don't want peace. So you can try and eradicate me all you want with all the salt and all the rituals right. and all the things you are going to try and do. Screw you. I'm staying. I mean, it, it, does it depend on the type of spirit you're dealing with that has a power like that? Or does that exist? Does the does the living ultimately have the upper hand no matter what? I think the bat power does exist. I have seen it happen where they'll leave when you're there, when I'm there mm -hmm. um, and then they'll come back when you're gone. That's why I always teach people how to do this stuff. I don't just do it. Sure. I teach them how to do it and hopefully, but I think, I mean, I have certainly read cases and seen cases and talked to a lot of people where that's happened. Um, sometimes you got to get a team of things. Sometimes you got to do some ceiling work on the outside, but you know, are there things more powerful for me? You better believe it. I've, I've felt them. I haven't, had to, I haven't had to go against them, but I've felt them. I know they're there. And there are some powerful things in nature, and there's powerful things in spirit. Now, I, I don't believe in demons, mm -hmm. per se. I believe the words, one, is over to use, two, it gives it transfers too much power. Yeah. Because people get that, that image of, of, of the pits and you know, of hell and, and all that stuff. And so fear takes too much of a reign in that. And so it gives them to the being more power. That's my opinion. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of this is, is strictly opinion based. And I always love yeah. to hear everyone's perspective on it from where they're coming from. I guess my question with that would be because a lot of times you kind of have the, the ghost family tree and it, it's ever expanding. <laughs> they have more questions than answers. Yeah. The more people I talk sure. to. But you, you kind of on a very base level, you have ghosts of the living uh, who, you know, and, and you can have every personality type there from the kindest sweetest mm -hmm. person in the world to horrible dictators who murdered millions of yep. people um and they could sure. all be spirits um and, and that that horrible dictator type person could easily come across as a demon uh because in life they pretty much were a demon but they were once a living breathing human being oh, yeah. um and then you have well, they'll a, say, uh, uh, yeah they'll say demon i mean yeah. they, it's like oh yeah demon yeah well how do i know you're telling me the truth exactly you know, because yeah. yeah, I don't know. You know yeah. it's like I don't think so. And then a lot of times you'll have people jump in the, uh, down the road of, and then there's angels of the people who never walked the earth but are there to help. Yeah. Um, and then you'll have the the demon category where it's they never walked the earth and they're there to d destroy and, and just you know cause the headache. With your belief system, and and you said you don't like to use the word demon. Um, how does that work with you? What what's your thought process there? Are are all the spirits, all the things that we're interacting with? on the other side were they all once here as people who have passed or are there other entities and other things out there that are conscious that are able to manipulate and communicate that are something else i believe that i believe that not every spirit you come across as is a is the ghost of a, a former human being and it's because i've experienced it i mean and i usually get it in a way that they're either benign or they're, or, you know, they're just powerful. They just don't want, they just don't care to, you know, think to mess with things. Um, or they tend to be somewhat helpful. But these, all these elemental spirits, um, and, you know, you go back and you look at some of the folklore from Europe and other countries. You talk about the little people, the Fae, and all those kind of stuff. These aren't people. And, and people have been experiencing these types of things for, for hundreds of thousands of years. And so you have these, these elementals are these beings that um, are not human. They're something else. Um, there's some other kind of, of construct, be it of nature or whatever. Um, I'm not sure. Again, this gets to the point where I don't know exactly what the rules are and yeah. how these things, you know, with this. But I've encountered them. Um, I was doing a, a and there's this place down in Missouri I went to. It's called it's called Valley Mines. And we so had the second oldest house west of the Mississippi. There was a French mining colony town, is what it was back in the back in the day. And the house had been built in 1749. And so we'd gone there to do an event and do a, a uh, get some people together and go investigate all this stuff. And so we go and we get there, and there's a bunch of cabins across the road. And um, so we were going to the various cabins. We were going to do the, the, the old house last, and we came across Wainwright's cabin and. 
it has been built in 1850 or something like that, still there. So we we go in there and we had I another team. I'm not I have a team. I work with other teams and whatnot. Um, there's less drama that way, but um, I have found. So we were all in there and they had a they had a medium with them and. So we're all in there. We went in there too, and every place we gone to was very active. Here, all the stuff lit up. You could feel the, you know, feel the spirits. Walked in this place, everything went dead. And Melissa, the lady, knowing whitey who's the medium, she looks at me and goes, uh, "Chris, I say, yeah, but they don't, they don't like you, so they're not going to come out." Now that does happen occasionally because, like I talked before, about having getting spirits to, to kind of, kind of muscling up energy wise to get a spirit to leave. They can feel that, and they, they're somewhat timid around me or they just don't like me because you know who's this jerk who thinks he can do stuff like that so every once in a while i have to walk out i have to excuse myself and walk out and things you know things start working out so at this place you know it's, it's out in this valley and it was you know it's surrounded by trees and things like that and this little clearing was where the town part was and i'm looking also i see little lights and things like that in the grass so i thought i do or whatnot, or fireflies, but it's like awfully white to be a firefly. So I went down, so I walked over towards it, and then the lights were seated. I said, well, that's odd, because I, I reached the grass. There was no dew in the grass. It was very dry. And I walked back, and they came back out. They you know, advanced again. So every time I you know, play a little game with them, they go back and forth. And you can kind of see these little bitty twinkly lights in the back of the woods, this huge Red light, just, you know, I thought it was taillights of a car, and I thought later there's no road back there. It was what some people call a spook light. Um, but it's, it's these elemental powers at work there, and you can just feel it. It's a different kind of energy altogether. And I said, well, this is kind of cool. And, I, you know, I'd always kind of believed in it, but I'd never really had a really big experience with it. I said, now I'm seeing all this stuff firsthand. And they, they intermingle well with the native um, spirits I, I've found since then. And so I grabbed back, we, you know, a couple people looked in and said, wow, that's really cool. You know, I said, yeah, it's, we, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of mocked. It was cool. I said, I'll, you know, put my, my data bank to work on later and went on with the event and went, ended up the big cabin and whatnot. And that was fun. So then I said, let's try something. I said, I've got everybody in a circle. I got my drum. I always take my drum with me wherever I go. And I sang a couple songs. We talked to the spirits. We directly said, hey, you know, spirits of this land, we know, you know, your grandmas and grandfathers, you know, we, thank you for watching us and we really enjoyed being here and start just you know make it nice to them that's what you do when you're in somebody else's somebody else's land and so we and we sang a couple more songs and all of a sudden the tree starts swaying when there's no wind and i thought good lord and you could you know and people went to the edge of the trees and stuff their little things and the you know the little lights are going off on the k2s and everything and they got some evps of whispering and things like that and it's like whoa you know that is a power greater than um, a regular, which we call ghost. Mm-hmm. So those are the elemental powers at work. And I, since then, I've had some other experiences with them. That's pretty. It's pretty neat. When you have to go head to head with something dark that was mm-hmm. not not human, is it a whole right. different set of rules for dealing with something like that versus dealing with something that was living that would understand, you know, basic human to human communication? Um, I find out they usually understand. Okay. Right? That's, that's why and I've not had a conversation. I cannot say that. Sure. Um, but it's more of an energy, like energy to energy. That is like mind to mind. And so God, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I, I can build my energy up pretty good. And that's what I do when I feel other people are in danger around me. Because I, I see, if, I have, if I'm investigating with people, I ask people to come out with me, then it's my job to make sure they're safe. And so you feel these, like, this dark, I've had it happen before in a couple places where you feel this dark entity come in and it's not human. You can just feel it. It's a whole different feeling. And it's usually they're just curious. But there have been times when it feels threatening, and so I'm like, okay, well, first you get everybody the hell out is, if you can. Um, but it's, it is a different type of, I mean, at the end of the day, it's still, am I strong enough to keep it from, doing whatever it wants to do and it may just be benign it just happens to have that bad feeling to it sure but it's it's like it's a total different it there's not that give and take mentally it's just it's feeling to feeling power to power mm-hmm. and a lot of times I, they come in and it's like okay i just hope and they usually they'll keep their distance and i might say you know if somebody's with me hey say be awake over here get your energy up and that seems to do the trick um but i've never had been attacked frontally or anything like that i've been grabbed 
Mm-hmm. I've had a rock thrown at me um, a couple of times, been hit with a pebble once. And it's just, to me, it's more mischievous, but I, you can just feel it. Yeah. And I think to myself, it's like, okay, just get all your energy up and it'll, it'll won't want to come play with you and you don't, and you stay away from it. And that seems, seems to keep their distance. Now I have, I have talked to other people who've encountered some pretty nasty things. Um, so far I've been lucky not to have, have gotten in over my head, but I always tell people that could happen because that's, you know, that's what I do. And so I go into these situations and so who knows what could happen sometime. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a whole different feeling, Tony. It's, um, you know, it's one of those things that's hard to explain. It's hard to, to say, you know, you just know it when you feel it. It's, sure. it's something, it's, it's almost has to be experiential. I couldn't put it on a chalkboard. I mean, I could, I could tell you and say, you will feel a strong energy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you're completely oblivious to that thing, you might not feel it. You might just feel uneasy. You know, sometimes you walk in someplace, you feel uneasy. It's, that could be just, that could be your response, your body's response to it. Yeah. Um, but you, they generally... Um, if you have, you know, if you're open, that sort of thing, it'll pretty, it'll make a pretty good impression on you in me, that way. So let me ask yeah. this earlier, you had talked about, uh, graves being disturbed and, and then trying to, mm-hmm. to make peace when a grave is disturbed, um, is uh, mm-hmm. the, the assumption I think everyone will jump to is, well, it must be the spirit of the person whose grave that is, that is now acting out, that is, is upset. Is that always the case, though? Is it always that individual whose grave was disturbed that's returning to let you know I'm angry about this? Or is it more something of, of the area, something of kind of the rules of the game of you don't disturb a grave. Uh, right. You know, there, there's other watchmen out here that are going to let you know on the other side of that wasn't cool what you just did. Mm-hmm. I think it can be both. I think it's more like what you're saying about something else is there because, I mean, we'd be neck deep in freaking ghosts if yeah. everybody was still hanging around or coming back and forth. Now, there's a whole different area there of coming back and forth the portals and that's a whole whole new ball game there and how that supposedly works but i think it mostly it, it's just something around that feels that you know i think some spirits remain behind to protect areas i don't know why but they seem to mm-hmm. um but yeah i think it's i think especially a lot of the native cases it's just native spirits around that you know or desecrating but it could be anybody if you intentionally de- desecrate a grave i mean and because as human beings, we put so much energy into that, you know, to um, our loved ones been buried there. So we leave all that energy of, of, you know, this now the body's supposed to be interred and safe and is in God's hands. And somebody comes around with a bulldozer or whatnot and, you know, and roots it up. And so it could it could get a lot of re- it gets re- reactions out of living people that aren't related to those folks. You, know, you see all types of I get pretty upset when I find out. Um, graves are being desecrated. Yeah, and I will let people know that. Um, but I think too, it's just yeah. I think it's more. I think it's probably more likely it's just the spirit that's around. But it, I could see it because some spirits are tied to this earth; they won't move on mm-hmm. apparently, and so they're going to you know, or they're in a. You get, well, you know, how in life we get fixated about something and just will not let it go, mm-hmm. even though you know you should. Um, uh, for some people, it's an ex-wife or an ex-husband or or somebody's mother or something, a boss who fired them, or they fixate on that. And usually, after time, we say, "Okay, well, we, let's, you know, it's, it's nothing to do about it now. Let's just move on." Some people don't move on; their whole lives are they're dedicated to focusing on this negative event. And so, I imagine the things, same things happen. Some people they say that's why spirits remain behind. You know, whether you call it unfinished business or what, if they're so fixated. They won't move on because it's like, okay, this is where my body's at, so I'm going to stay right here. You know, they're so it's so attached to their body, mm-hmm. and they don't move on. I mean, that's a, theoretically that's very that's possible. So, you know, I, I think it's more likely to be a, a spirit that's there and like, oh, okay, this isn't a good day, sure, and they'll start acting up. So often when individuals in their homes or their property, whatever it may be, have something mm-hmm. unexplained going on, uh, obviously the, the natural reaction, because it's become a normal thing with popular culture and all of the ghost shows, it is now, well, let's call the paranormal investigation team to come on out here and let's have them yeah. answer the question or eradicate or whatever they're their idea is of, of what, what they think should be happening. 
to to just tamper down whatever uncomfortable activity is happening. Um, that, that's the road that they go to. If you could say yeah. one thing to the to individuals out there who who have something going on that that may not be you know to the level of you know we need a full investigation and we need you know exorcisms or whatever uh, out there yeah, right. to, to just to calm things down to make peace if there is in fact something going on uh, at someone's home. I, I, would you say that there's sometimes just a very simple answer that you don't need to get a bunch of people involved? If you just sure. followed this simple best practices, here's how you could find peace on your own. What would your message be to that? You know, first is like, um, you know, kind of step away from the situation for a second and look over the whole house, what could be causing noises, you know, kind of check that stuff first. Um, people want to just jump to, um, okay, so like I knew some people that they um, heard scratching and they had a trailer head scratching and stuff like that and thought demons were trying to get in their trailer. Well, right, you take a look and there's they had mice or something underneath the, in the skirting there that was scratching on that. That's what was causing the noise. Mm -hmm. And so take a look at all that stuff first because, you know, like you said, the airwaves are saturated with ghost shows right now on the Travel Channel and yeah. the other ones. And the concert just trot not show after show. It's incredible. Um but, you know, everybody jumps to that conclusion. Find out what's, you know, take a good look around your house and see maybe this is making the noise. Try to replicate what you think you're hearing. You know, go through that route first. Make sure it's, it's nothing else. Calm down. Take a step back and, and take a, a good look at what is physical that could be causing the issue. Now, a lot of times it's like, okay, I, it just comes to something as simple as say, I, I will come out and I'll tell people, just say hello, good morning to it. You know, if you feel it by say, hey, good morning, how you doing? Uh, or, you know, thank you for, you know, for being here. Um, or if they're being a pill, it's like, just stop, you take control of your own house and say with conviction, knock it off. I'm trying to do something. You know, it, it's, it's, it can be that simple. You always start with the kindness first and say, hey, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Um, you know, what can I do to help you today? Or, you know, or just, oh, you know, or I'll sit you out a little food here every once in a while. And, um, you know, they, you might not find the food gone, but the offering itself is, is very important that you're showing that you get respect and courtesy. Um, but you can also, too, like I said, um, be stirring with it. Say, hey, this is my house. You know, maybe you used to live here. I don't know. But, you know, you, you know, we don't mind having you around, but you got to behave while I'm, you know, doing this or leave me alone. There's a lot of people who are budding empaths or mediums that get bugged by spirits because they think the spirits think they can talk to them and they can't do it yet. Or maybe never will. They may never want to say yes to that, which I, you know, I certainly understand that. But you have to lay down boundaries, like you would with your children or anybody else, any other house guest you have. You know, you know, come in my house and and tear up my furniture or move stuff around. No, leave stuff alone. Um, and that can be be helpful as well. Or um, if your house is cluttered, unclutter it. Make a good flow of energy going to your house, and that can make things a lot better. Um, I went to a house one time to help this guy out, and they, they were hoarders. Nobody had to have bugs too. I had to call Mrs. Coyote to come down and it, meet me at the basement with a, a full set of clothes and and get this other stuff into the wash and debug my 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 bags and stuff like that that I carry with me. So um, that's another thing: just declutter, make your house a brighter, more wholesome place. Um, sometimes I've seen a lot of cases where people are in emotional crisis through many different reasons, and the ghosts show up for the show. There are some. I, there was a ghost like that at my in-laws' house that would show because they would get in fights and stuff. Sometimes they show up for the show. So, you know, live a more live a quieter, calmer life, and so they they don't get any feed. You know, they don't either feed off or they enjoy it, whichever you know. Some people, some spirits seem to enjoy that stuff, and so they'll come hang around. Do things to improve your life that way, and that can also be helpful. Um, again, you know, if that doesn't work, then you could you could. I wouldn't call a whole team, and I'd ask one person to come over and say, "Have do an evaluation." Before they come tromping around with all their stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, and you know, you can light a candle, and, you know, some people like to, to pray to the angels, cool, you know, or ask your spirit guides to come in. Everybody's got spirit guides. Um, to ask your spirit guide, you know, you have them get to come in and, and say, hey, you know, please help me, or Angel Uriel, Archangel Uriel, or you know, whatever, you, whatever your, your belief is, that's cool. You know, bring that positive energy into your life. And that is also helpful, if I, you know, without calling, you know, the Ghostbusters out to come to your house and, and do all their stuff. 
So yeah, there's all sorts of things. But a lot of it's just is just stand up and say, Hey, I'm not I'm not putting up with this. And here's some sage, you know. Let's you know, you can smudge your house too. That's you know, anything to make it more wholesome can be helpful. That wraps up part two of our conversation with Chris Sutton. A big thank you to him for joining us on the program today. Until next time for the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruski. Thank you for being a gravekeeper and supporting the Grave Talks.